You're listening to the Daughter Arise podcast, where we develop our superwoman persona to conquer our personal worlds as well as the world at large. If you are ready to explore eye-opening, insightful, results-driven topics that will anchor your confidence and help you go to the next level in your lives, keep listening. Welcome to the Daughter Arise podcast, where we develop our superwoman persona to conquer our personal worlds as well as the world at large. Our scripture focus for this podcast is Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2, AMPC translation, which reads, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and dense darkness all peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, and his glory shall be seen on you. Hey ladies, hey, happy Saturday. I pray you all are having a wonderful day so far. Um, So today you guys get a special episode of the Daughter Arise podcast. And what makes this episode so special is number one, um, I usually don't upload the uh, new Daughter Arise podcast episodes until Tuesday. And number two, uh, it is my prayer that um, this Daughter Arise podcast is going to help uh, some people who may have been um, experiencing uh, bondage because of the uh, topic that I'm going to be discussing uh, for today. So today I'm going to be uh, talking about the healing balm of forgiveness, you know, um, and the great inner release that forgiving others uh, will cause, you know. So in the uh, last part of, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) In the last part of 2022, uh, 2021, God had been impressing upon me to, um, before the, the year 2021 went out that, um, to do, uh, a message, you know, on forgiveness, you know, he, he gave me a dream one night, um, which, in the dream, I could clearly see and understand that, you know, uh, what unforgiveness, you know, some, um, some issues of unforgiveness can cause. So, um, the next day I got up, I said, you know what, I'm going to write this out and, um, um, I'm going to, you know, do, uh, the episode on, um, unforgiveness, our forgiveness, you know, before the year is out, but, um, I didn't get a chance to do that. So I'm going to go, I said, I'm going to go ahead and do it on Saturday because it is important to go ahead and, um, to, uh, release people, you know, and to forgive people, you know, and cause it's not just for their sakes, it's for our sakes as well. You know, and uh what some people don't realize is that, you know, carrying unforgiveness, especially when you just carrying that stuff around for years, it is like baggage, it's bondage, you know, it's toxic. You know, some people can have uh unforgiveness in them to the point where it's hard to be around them. You know, because like I said, it's toxic, you know, um, and you can't really, uh, you know, talk to them or deal with them because it's, it's like they're, the unforgiveness has made them kind of irrational. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, God wants us free of these things. You know, God doesn't want uh, the certain things, anything really, you know, stealing, 
uh, days of our lives, you know, um, causing uh, uh, friction and, and tension in relationships, you know. And another thing unforgiveness does it, or can do, it can cause sickness and disease in your body. It, it most certainly can. Harboring unforgiveness can cause sickness and disease to develop in your body. You know, so these are some highly damaging things that unforgiveness, you know, can do to us if we're not willing to release people. So... Like I said, before the new year came, I was supposed to uh, do this uh, episode. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to make sure to do it uh, this Saturday because it's important. You know, when God is uh, bringing a subject to you to discuss, it's important that you uh, go ahead and do that. So I, like I said, people can get out of that bondage and be set free. So, uh, many of you might remember, uh, it might've been, um, a couple of years ago or so that I told a story that, um, how God showed me what unforgiveness was doing in my body. So years ago, when I no well not like all that many years ago, but a few years ago, I was having dreams, and these dreams were troubling dreams. I was like, oh my god, um, in the dream I was like constantly vomiting. I mean, like vomiting, like I could not stop, and I'm like, what is going on? And even when I like. In the dream, I'm thinking I'm finished and I'll go to the sink and to clean my mouth out and things like that. And the vomiting, vomiting would continue. And I'm like, why is this happening? Like when I wake up, I'm like, why is this happening? Because I had this dream like numerous times. And I'm thinking like, oh my God, is is there some type of sickness going on in my body? Like, you know, am I sick? What's going on? Why do I keep having these dreams? And I kept having those dreams because God was trying to show me that there was something going on inside of me. So, um, um, what was going on was it wasn't a physical sickness per se, but it was a spiritual sickness. Okay. Those dreams were the result of me uh, carrying around anger and resentment, you know, towards my uh, biological father, you know. Um, yeah, so there was some issues there in that relationship, you know, and other relationships that caused me to uh, have that that sickness. They, you know, these dreams were showing me issues of the soul. You know, these were uh soul wounds, uh emotional wounds, you know, and so God was showing me like it was like a sickness, like, you know, um just constantly, you know, causing me to vomit and things like that to where to the point where I couldn't stop it. So, um God uh one day opened the door for me to have conversations with uh, my biological dad, and he opened the door for me to have uh, other conversations with who, you know, the people I needed to have these conversations with, and everything went fine. You know, it wasn't no arguing, no anger, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because some people, some people, even when they know they are wrong, <laughs> they get offensive and they want to like get mad and not talk to you. But everything worked out because I allowed God to open the door for these conversations to take place and they took place and then and it was freeing, you know. And so after those conversations took place, I heard the words uh, rivers, springs, and waterfalls. So to me, God was, uh, those words that uh, came up 
came into my spirit was God uh, to me showing me or telling me that Sherelle, like, I'm glad that you took the step to um, deal with this issue in your life, you know, so now you know, the, the springs, the, the, uh, the rivers, the waterfalls to me denoted, uh, a, a great inner release, you know, because I dealt with those issues of unforgiveness, you know? So, um, and then after that, I had the dream maybe, uh, a couple of times after that, but they were not like before, like they was not as long as before. So to me, it was like, okay, healing was taking place and, um, the dreams were shorter. They were not as as evasive, you know. So, and then after that, it was like, like I said, a couple of times after that, and then it was done, you know. So, thank God. <laughs> it was done. I have not had that dream since then because I'm telling you, ladies, it was troubling. It was really troubling. I was like, what is going on here, you know. So, and another thing, you know, God, he will nudge us. He will, okay. All right. So basically, you know, when God is working with us, okay, um, when we get born again, you know, um, you know, and then we're developing our relationship with God and, you know, we're getting in his word and stuff. And then, you know, our eyes, God is open. It begins to open our eyes to certain things, you know? And so, um, just like that dream. Okay. So, but God is not going to force you to do something that you don't want to do. You have to be a, a, a willing participant, okay, in the uh, healing process, in the transitional process. You know, we have to be willing participants. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the truth. It don't always feel good because a lot of times uh, what God is asking us to do, even though it's for our own good, sometimes we don't want to do it. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to do it because all we thinking about is, no, this person made me mad. This person hurt me. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times we don't want to do it, but when we don't do it, we will continue to stay in that bondage. We will continue to have those chains wrapped around us, you know, and God doesn't want that. He wants us free, you know? So, um, yeah, that's why it's so important for us to uh, work with God, you know, and allow him to work with us, you know, work uh, in us and through us to bring these issues to the forefront so we can be healed of these issues. You know, I had another uh, situation, you know, to where uh, a, a situation happened and I was it wasn't so much that I was uh, hurt about it. I, I was angry. <laughs> I was ticked off, you know? <laughs> and um, yeah, so it was another instance to where, you know, I had to forgive somebody and I'm not going to lie. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it, you know? And believe me when I tell you, <laughs> I, I suffered the consequences in not doing it when I was supposed to do it, Okay. I talk about that in um, the new book uh, that I just released. Um, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Uh, the key to biblical success and prosperity. You know, I talk about that story in that book. But yeah, so a lot of times, yeah, we sometimes we do not want to do it. But, you know, like I said, then we have to bear the consequences of our actions when we choose not to do what God is leading us to do. And it's not a punishment. You know, it's not a punishment. It's, it's us, you know, um, causing certain things to happen because we, we are refusing to do what's going to, uh, free us. And like I said, I'm, um, unforgiveness also is a blessing blocker. It really is. A lot of people are stuck. A lot of people can't move past to the next point in their lives or the next level of their lives because, you know, they're carrying around uh, the the chains and the bondage of unforgiveness and you can't even move to the next level of your life. You know, you can't get a promotion on your job that you deserve, you know, because you won't let this forgiveness go. You know, you can't even have a, 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 de a decent relationship with your kids because you won't let this for unforgiveness go. You know, what I've learned is, 
You know, a lot of times when you are upset with your parents, you know, and then you have children, you are taking that spirit from um, your anger towards your parents and it's coming into the your relationship with your kids. You know, so there are so many reasons. I could sit on here for hours and tell you a plethora of reasons of why um, letting this unforgiveness go. But if you want to be free, you know, if you want the chains broken, if you want to come out of bondage, you have to let it go, ladies. You have to let it go. I'm going to take a quick break and then I'll be right back. The idea for this podcast came from a term I heard Bishop T.D. Jakes use during the promotion of his book on entrepreneurship entitled Soar and the video series he did to accompany the book. The term Bishop used is defying the laws of gravity. Ever since I heard this term, it has stuck with me. Defying the laws of gravity means to me taking an inspection of what is on the inside of us that would attempt to hold us back from pursuing or accomplishing the things we desire to do. This pertains to any area of life such as relationships, employment, careers, forming businesses, and um, accepting opportunities. As I continue to ponder this, I thought about the Word of God and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that is in every believer. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, it talks about the manifestations of the Spirit that would rest on Jesus. It says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We can see the manifestations of the Spirit clearly demonstrated in Jesus' ministry. If the Spirit of God resting on Jesus, who was the Word of God made flesh, provided him with these supernatural attributes to carry out his assignment, then surely the Word of God on our Bible pages and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us can be used for the same purpose, to help us fulfill our God-given mandate. These things can also serve as catalysts for breaking through any inner and outside elements that would attempt to hinder, derail, or stop us from achieving our dreams. For this reason, I equated our experience with the Word of God and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to the experience of a superhero endowed with supernatural abilities to make us feel more alive, more confident, and more secure in doing what we desire to do. This is where the theme and sub-theme for this podcast derives from. Okay, welcome back, ladies. So... Uh, Today, I really want to focus on uh, healing, the healing of relationships, Uh, primarily relationships between parents and children. You know, um, what I've realized as an adult and being a mother myself, you know, looking back on my childhood or whatever, you know, I I understand now that uh, a lot of things um, aren't so black and white and cut and dry as I assumed they were when I was a child. You know what I'm saying? Because as a child, you, you know, we don't know much. We're children, you know, but... Uh, you know, and then sometimes we, we are angry with our parents, you know, and it's because we don't understand a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? So as a mother, as an adult, you know, um, as a student of life, you know, a student of the word, I understand that a lot of things, you know, weren't weren't so cut and dry and black and white as I assumed they were as a children. It was, as a child, it was a lot of things that I did not understand. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, many of our parents and many of us um, as parents did the best that we could in the mindset and the mind frame that we were in, 
you know. So I'm saying this, um, and every, listen, every situation is different, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when it comes to like, uh, where there was abuse against a child, um, in, in, in childhood, you know, um, you know, you're really going to have to, um, uh, draw near to God and pray, you know, um, with handling that situation, you know, with your parents, you know, but even Joyce Meyer, you know, Joyce Meyer's the, uh, very popular Christian Bible teacher, you know, she talks openly about her childhood and, um, you know, the, the situation she grew up in, you know, that her own father, you know, sexually abused her as a child and, um, her mother knew it and turned a blind eye to it. And, um, and, you know, and so Joyce Meyer, uh, when God was working with her and developing her, you know, to be the minister, the powerful, uh, woman of God, uh, Bible teacher that she is today, you know, this, th this is one of the areas God had to work with her in, you know, and, uh, you know, she had to, uh, forgive her father and her mother. And she did, she forgave them for what they did to her. So like I said, this, I mean, with situations like that, every situation is different. That was the abuse of a child. And, um, you know, uh, you really have to draw nigh to God, you know, in prayer and supplication and, uh, to, to, uh, discern or to get wisdom for what's best in your situation. But just say, for instance, though, like, although, you know, even if there, if there was abuse in your childhood or, um, uh, whatever the case, uh, you're still required to forgive. Even if you don't have a relationship with that person or persons, we are still, uh, um, uh, um, uh, required to forgive and to, um, release people and in releasing people, we release ourselves. Okay. So, um, I want to read a Bible passage. It is from Mark chapter 11. And, um, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. I must start from verse 23 and, and go to, uh, verse 26. It says, uh, for assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. You know, so um, that's Jesus telling us right there that, you know, whatever we stand asking God in prayer, you know, we have to make sure that if we have ought against anybody, you know, to forgive them so that our father in heaven can forgive us. And also I want to mention this, um, this too, like, you know, uh, children that were abandoned by, uh, you know, are with absentee parents, you know, um, a lot of times are, you know, our hearts are broken and we're hurt because uh, uh, there's a parent or parents that uh, did not um, think it was uh, not, well, I'm not going to say that they, they didn't think it was important, but that they might not have been around. And so today, if you are uh, dealing with, um, you know, anger and unforgiveness, towards an absentee parent, I just want to encourage you today, you know, don't give two thoughts, okay? Don't spend your life giving two thoughts of some about somebody 
that chose not to be in your life. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, there's a scripture in uh, Psalms 27. Um, it says, if your mother and father forsake you, you know, God is with you, something like that. But it's in Psalm 27. You know, if your mother and your father forsake you, you know, God is there. He's with you. He's love. He love you. You know, that parent or those parents, they have something in them that they got to deal with. But don't you waste another day, another hour, another minute, you know, concerning yourself about why that person or persons, um, you know, chose not to be in your life. And so there's another story where, you know, a preacher, I heard, I heard a preacher on TV talking about his father, you know, um, he, his father had kids with different women, left the mom, his mother, you know, it was with other women, had other kids. And, um, and so, uh, the father wasn't around as much when, you know, he was growing up, you know, cause he was out, you know, doing his thing. And like I said, having kids with other women and things like that. So, uh, there came a time where I guess the father got in contact with him and, you know, he was a grown man, preacher, you know, things like that. And, you know, the father got in contact with him and they ended up meeting and, um, and he said the father, uh, I guess the father hinted or, uh, asked for some money and I guess he was like, oh, okay, wow, that's why you wanted to see me or whatever. He said, the, like, the father got, like, real ugly, start cursing and, you know, tripping and acting just crazy. And, you know, he was hurt. Like, his father finally came into his life. He, you know, thinking about this moment probably for years and, um, and, and then, for the meeting to end up like that. You know what I'm saying? So he was hurt. He was confused. You know, grown man. But he was like, what's going on? And and he said, he said something so powerful. Okay. This was some years ago that I heard this. But he said something so powerful. He said, God told him, this is what I protected you from. So... Yes, he missed his father growing up. Yes, his father was absent in his life. Yes, his father <clears throat> wasn't around, you know, um, in, in some of the most important, important moments of his life. But God said, this is what I protected you from. So this is why, you know, God hid him and kept him and kept that man from him because he was keeping him from you know, somebody who wasn't in their right mind and who could not love him in the way that he deserved to be loved. So sometimes God is protecting you, keeping you safe from people who is who are not in the right mind frame to be a parent to you. So don't waste another day, another day, you know, um, angry and hurt and bitter over someone who has chosen not to be in your life. You, 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 you rely on God as your parent. You rely on God as the parent that you need. That's what I loved about that movie, The Shack. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. My daughter told me about it and my husband and I watched it and you know the, the 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 character on there was being abused by his dad and um um and so he you know <laughs> you know he 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 was being abused by his dad the i think yeah the mom was being abused by the father you know he was just an angry drunk you know and things like that but guess what his father did the same thing to him and his mother, you know, so it was like I said, that that spirit going from generation to generation. And then, you know, something horrible happened to uh, his daughter. And anyway, he he uh, uh, went back to the place what where it happened to his daughter and um, and God called him there. And so when he realized who he was speaking to, when he had that encounter with God, you know, God was a woman, you know, played by Octavia Spencer. But like, you know, 
he she told him uh when he first came it wasn't the father he needed it was a mother you know what i'm saying so god can be whoever you need whenever you need it you know what i'm saying so i want to encourage you to not waste another day another minute you know um upset and angry over who chose not to be in your life you know i know it hurts i know it doesn't feel good but i pray that what i am speaking and and um um, and, and sharing today will help you understand a lot more. And like I said, you can go to Psalms 27 and read that Psalm, you know, to find solace, you know, if that's what you need, you know, like I said, some people are just not equipped, you know, <laughs> are ready or, you know, um, you know, equipped to be the parent that you need and is probably best, you know, for you that they are not in your life right now until they get their head and they they mind and they life together. I mean I mean I don't know uh uh all of uh Keisha Cole's mom's story, Frankie, you know, but they tried to keep, you know, like you know, from what I saw, it seemed like they kept trying to, you know, pull her in and like, you know, be a mother to us, you know, be a mother, you know, and she probably desired with all her heart to be a mother to her children, you know, but I mean, you know, the drugs had her, you know, and she couldn't, she wasn't in the mind set in the mind frame to be everything that those, those kids needed, even as adults, you know, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pray that, uh, your absentee parent would get their life together. But at the same time, you know, you focus on you, you focus on your life, but you can keep them in prayer, but don't, I don't want you hurting over this anymore. So I pray that what I shared, um, uh, have helped uh, some of you, like I said, you know, I'm going to be praying for the, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pray and to pray, you know, uh, for the rest of this month for reconciliation between, uh, uh, parents and children, you know, so those, uh, those relationships can be reconciled and healing could take place, you know, and I just want to, uh, encourage you to forgive, to release people so you can be set free. You know what I'm saying? So your life won't be held up. So you won't, um, uh, uh, be sick and, and carrying the weight of, of unforgiveness in your life anymore. So God bless you ladies. I pray, uh, that you enjoy the rest of your Saturday and the rest of your weekend. God bless and take care.